All right, Chris. Well, it was great to hear a bunch of the statistics that you gave at annual conference and hear about the different ways that young adults are interacting with the church. So when you were doing um, the research for those statistics and gathering all that information, were there any of the statistics that were interesting to you or surprised you even? Yeah, I, I think for me, uh, the dropout rate in particular was very fascinating mm. to me. Uh, thinking through that 61% of Protestant youth who mm. grew up in the church yeah. come to disengage from the church once they kind of leave high school, mm -hmm. which is really shocking to me. And um, I guess I really didn't think through my own kind of high school experience and thinking through my own like youth group and yeah. didn't really think about my peers who like would also disengage. You know, my, my close friends from youth group also disengaged and didn't realize that they were part of the statistics. So as I was researching, um, I was fascinated about why, what youth programs, why does children's program and youth programs lead to these young adults disengaging? Like, why 61%? Because I can read a statistic like 75% of all young adults are not engaged in the church, and it just seems so large and doesn't really you know, seem so applicable to me. But it really fascinates me why we grow up kids in youth group and children's ministries, and then they disengage. Um, and so I, I don't understand why, and that was the most <laughs> shocking for me, really. Yeah. So when we're talking about a lot of these statistics and we're talking about where the young adults have kind of disappeared from the church or haven't made that jump from high school over to post-high school young adulthood, yeah. um, can you talk a little bit about where you see hope in those statistics? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think when I first read these statistics, I have no hope. <laughs> I sit there and say, <laughs> yeah. well, the church is just going to die in 20 years and mm. there's just no hope. And, and really, when I first read those statistics, I really feel that way. I just have this deep, like, hurt and just confusion why why it's at this at this point um, but I had someone recently tell me that they had a kind of a similar situation in the 1960s where a lot of people were kind of disengaging from the church in the 1960s 1970s and that's kind of where like the charismatic the yeah. contemporary kind of boom started yeah. and that's kind of what revitalized the church and so I was thinking about that and thinking that if it happened just a few you know decades ago that it's quite possible um, that it, it can be possible now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that we're having these conversations, right? Uh, and so I think it's amazing that we're starting to think this way, that there's a lot of research out right now, a lot of people writing. Um, so I have hope that, that God is bigger than this, right? That if God can have miracles and do all of these crazy things, God can begin to teach us how to engage uh, and be a ministry with young adults again. Great, great. So some of the statistics showed that we looked at showed how teens are some of the most religiously active people in America. But 20-somethings, there is a big gap and there's that big drop-off where they're not as involved in the mm -hmm. church or most of them not involved in the church at all. Yeah. So having you kind of brainstorm a little bit, can you think of some ideas or reasons why there might be that big mm -hmm. drop-off in such a short period of time? Yeah. Uh, Something that comes to mind, which I've never read this in a book, but it's in yeah. my own kind of thinking, I wonder if actually youth groups have become idols, right? Mm. So we put a lot of emphasis in youth ministry, right? So oftentimes they're siloed, they're on their own. You know, we if, if we have a youth in our church, we say, go to youth group, be involved in the youth programs. We even hired a youth pastor or youth mm -hmm. minister to care for you. We kind of send them that way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's very easy for someone who is that age to... Uh, kind of see an idol out of that. Wow, this youth pastor is kind of my God, right? This ministry is my my place to be with God. And so when they have like maybe seven years of that or eight years of that, mm -hmm. and then kind of like they graduate, I mean, we graduate into the big kids church, right? Yeah. We haven't really done a good job of integrating. And so I wonder if actually youth programs are part of that, right? So mm -hmm. um, we put a lot of emphasis there, um, but we don't really help them integrate with a larger picture of the church or even larger picture of faith with a larger church community. I mean, I wonder if that's kind of part of that issue, that kind of initial drop off. And I think part of it is kids go off to college, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I yeah. went off to college when I graduated high school and moved to a different town, new faith communities. I didn't have my parents telling me to go to church <laughs> every week, right? I wasn't having that pressure. Yeah. Um, so it's very natural, it seems, that that drop off rate would happen, right? Mm -hmm. um, that people would begin to explore and... Yeah, so jumping off those idea of youth groups kind of mm -hmm. um, not preparing people to make that mm -hmm. jump. What? How would you see a youth group doing something that would mm -hmm. enable a young adult or a person becoming a young adult mm -hmm. to be able to take part in the church as a whole, not just its own siloed ministry? Yeah, I think the best examples of youth ministry that I've seen is just more intergenerational mm -hmm. ministry, mm -hmm. right? Um, where there's just this big emphasis that youth group isn't just on a Wednesday night where that's the only time, but um, how, what kind of worship do we have? And so is our worship engaging towards youth people, not youth group kids, not that it has to be only geared towards that, right? right. But that it can engage in that or 
um, you know, how, what kind of relationship do, do youth have with older members of the congregation? Mm-hmm. Right? Is there that amazing foster of relationships where, you know, they, the youth r- respect the older people and the older yeah. people respect the youth, right? So there's a deep kind of love for each other and um, where they kind of support each other very well. Um, okay, so kind of integrating the youth into the life of the church, not, yes. as, not by itself, mm-hmm. but in a holistic and yes. very deep relational manner is what you're saying exactly to right. help bridge that gap is mm-hmm. one way to do it. Right. I think integration is the key word. So it's not even assimilating into someone else's culture, okay. Okay. but it's integrating together, right? Yeah. And so we're moving forward together as you know, young and old together. I even wonder if like if the reach language is actually like hmm. part of that, right? So mm-hmm. I wonder if like, you know, and I, I love the question because we often say like, how do we reach young adults? And I mean, yeah. I say that on a continual basis, mm-hmm. but I wonder if we should not use that language and ask how can we engage in relationship with young adults, mm-hmm. right? And so how can we engage just through authentic, organic relationships where you and I are just coming together because we're two people, right? Yeah. Um, and so I wonder if churches are need to just, or we all just need to begin thinking, like, how do we just, do we know young adults, right? Mm-hmm. Do we know them? Do we know their stories? Do we know how they're really wrestling with identity of their culture and just the pressures that we feel as young people, right? So the pressures to be a really good Christian and the <laughs> pressure of being a really good citizen of the United States yeah. and to do really well academically and to find a really good job. And so there's all these things that we're really wrestling with. And um, so I wonder if programs aren't the answer, mm-hmm. right? I, I really don't personally like program language. That mm-hmm. means target, inauthentic. So I'm hearing more relationship language mm-hmm. than program language, that there's not really one big thing. You can't really put off this checklist no. and figure out, hey, this is how young adults come to the church. This is how we can make them get rid of all of that baggage <laughs> <Exactly>. about <laughs> yeah. being skeptical of the church mm-hmm. or the organization as a whole. But it's more about that relational stuff, whether right. in the regular life of the church mm-hmm. and outside as well.